Well, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, is off to a really bad start leading on his first initiative. That is completely ridiculous. This one is pretty insane. So Republicans in the House of Representatives are trying to couple funding to Israel with defunding the IRS. Now stick around as I break this down because it represents in so many ways one of the most aggravating characteristics of the modern Republican Party and proves they don't care about fiscal responsibility as they always talk about or reducing the deficit or any of these different things. Before discussing the IRS element of this though, why they're going after the IRS and why it's a horrible policy stance, let me outline the context on Israel funding. So a little while ago, as I covered on the bonus show, Biden addressed the nation on the war between Israel and Hamas. And during this address, he called on Congress to pass a funding package that he was proposing that would do a few things, provide funding to Israel, humanitarian aid to Palestinians that is so desperately needed aid to Ukraine as they continue to fend off Russia, some money to Taiwan and money to the southern border. Now, this was an attempt by Biden to merge a few different things, as you just saw there, to increase the likelihood that all the stuff he wanted would get through, especially because we're seeing strong opposition from some Republicans on aid to Ukraine. And Republicans came back and said, we don't want to vote on all these different things together. We want to have a standalone bill on funding to Israel, which again, the reason Biden is pushing for this sort of package is because especially with Ukraine and potentially humanitarian aid to Gaza as well, they're much less likely to get passed if they aren't paired with other things as well. So then we were sort of waiting to see what the Republicans counter offer of sorts would be. And now we have it, the proposal they've brought forward and the person heading it up is the new cuckoo speaker of the house, Mike Johnson. Here's this from NPR. After three weeks without a speaker, the house is back in business and putting aid to Israel at the top of its to-do list. On the same day, House Speaker Mike Johnson took office last week. The Republican led house passed a resolution declaring solidarity with Israel and pledging to give its government the funding needed to defeat Hamas. Now they've introduced a bill aiming to do just that, but not without controversy. The bill would send $14.3 billion to Israel without addressing funding requests for the war in Ukraine. Johnson's new bill would pay for the spending with $14.5 billion in cuts to the long understaffed internal revenue service. Now, because we've talked about extensively in the past why those against aid to Ukraine are wrong, we should be sending aid to Ukraine. I'll leave that to the side for this conversation and focus in on the IRS part of it. So if you haven't been keeping up with American politics recently, you're probably thinking, rightfully so, that's sort of strange. Why would they defund the IRS to fund a bill relating to Israel aid? Those things seem sort of unrelated, which they are unrelated, but the GOP's opposition to properly funding the IRS is a pretty remarkable tale. So let me break that down. In the Inflation Reduction Act, one of Joe Biden's landmark achievements, one of the provisions increased funding to the Internal Revenue Service, which if you're having that feeling of, ugh, the IRS, those are the people who take my money, I get it, but here's the situation. The IRS was severely underfunded, which meant they didn't have the resources to go after wealthy tax sheets in the ways that they should not to mention improving day-to-day -day experiences for us with the IRS, for example, lowering phone call wait times. But one of Joe Biden's promises was to require more people at the top of our economic ladder to pay their fair share, or at least try to get closer to that. What's an obvious place to start with that goal in mind? People who are avoiding the taxes they're lawfully obligated to pay. So by increasing the funding and resources to the IRS, the U.S. government would make a net profit. We make more money back in extra taxes than the extra funding even costs. Plus, it would be taxes gained from people who can absolutely afford to pay the amount they're obligated to. Specifically focusing on people making more than $400,000 per year, really no downside. Then Republicans came into the picture and they were thinking to themselves, are you mean to tell me that our wealthy donors may not be able to avoid taxes as effectively? <laughs> I don't think so, Joe. And they came up with this talking point that Biden was attempting to increase funding to the IRS to hire 87,000 IRS agents to go after conservatives. They're coming for you, MAGA. Of course it's nonsense, but the image was, and we heard this so many times, Biden has this IRS army now, and he's going to use it to go to MAGA homes and harass you for extra taxes. When in reality, unless you're making lots and lots of money, this doesn't affect you or it affects you positively. And if you are making lots and lots of money, why aren't you paying the lawful amount you're supposed to? It seems like you could at least pay the amount you're obligated to currently in taxes. Again, going after wealthy tax cheats, fantastic. 
who also happen to be able to afford not cheating on their taxes. <laughs> awesome, let's do it. But because of the complex ways in which they avoid paying taxes, it does take more resources, more manpower to go after them. And ever since that talking point about the 87,000 IRS agents, the army of Bidens that's gonna go after MAGA became popular, it's become a mission of the GOP to claw back this funding and make the IRS unable to go after those wealthy tax cheats. Before discussing further on that, here is Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen expressing concern a few months ago about these efforts. Um, we're all concerned about deficits and fiscal responsibility, but uh, deficits can be addressed both through changes in spending mm -hmm. and also through changes in revenue. And the Republicans right. have taken that off the table. Um, something that greatly concerns me mm -hmm. is that they have even been in favor of um, removing funding right. that's been provided to the Internal Revenue Service to crack down on tax fraud. We have an enormous gap between the taxes we're collecting and what we should be collecting um, if everyone paid the taxes that right. they really owe. And that's really a reflection of tax fraud. It amounts to um, an estimated $7 trillion over yeah. the next decade. So equipping the IRS with the funding they need to audit high-income individuals and mm -hmm. uh, corporations, that's something that doesn't cost money. It it nets money substantially mm -hmm. for the federal government. This one drives me crazy, as I've talked about in the past, and she's exactly right. Republicans are so desperate. And by the way, to quickly note, they've tried multiple times to get this done. Now they're bringing it up within this funding conversation with Israel, but they're desperately trying to prevent the IRS from addressing tax fraud. We're going to miss out, as Janet Yellen pointed out, of $7 trillion of tax revenue in the next 10 years if we don't do this. And they're going to focus on wealthy individuals and corporations, not bullying them even, but just getting the tax revenue they are fraudulently avoiding. And you know what would happen if Republicans got their way on this? The deficit and thus debt would increase more. They say they're all about fiscal responsibility, but then aggressively attempt to defund the rare organization within our government that actually makes a profit. Now, as a reminder, to show you just how much Republicans want to prevent the IRS from combating tax fraud, specifically among, as I'll keep saying, wealthy tax cheats. The first bill that Republicans brought to the floor when they took over the majority at the beginning of 2023 was aimed at defunding the IRS. That's the top priority, <laughs> really. And here was Democratic Congresswoman Judy Chu speaking out against that bill back when all this nonsense began. I rise in strong opposition to this bill. It is telling that the very first bill that the new Republican majority brought to the floor aims to protect wealthy tax cheats from following the law. For a decade, Republicans succeeded in stripping the IRS of the resources it needs to serve the American people. And the result has been frustrating and harmful to workers and families, but it's certainly fantastic for wealthy tax cheats who unfairly kept up to $1 trillion from the IRS every year. Congressional Democrats reversed this trend when we passed the Inflation Reduction Act. Now the IRS will finally have the resources it needs to properly audit wealthy taxpayers and corporations with complex returns and ensure that average Americans don't have to wait hours on the phone to fix problems. Americans deserve an IRS that fulfills its most basic duty to ensure all taxpayers and corporations follow the law and pay their fair share in taxes. Vote no on this bill. So the party of fiscal responsibility, as they call themselves, even though they have a worse record on deficits in modern American history and a worse record on economic performance in the last hundred years, but the fiscal responsibility party wants to prevent the government from bringing in as much tax revenue as it could just based on lawful taxes. What we should be getting, they're saying, no, don't, don't give us what we should be getting through this sort of policy. Just so some of those sweet, sweet wealthy donors can keep getting away with what they're currently getting away with. Now, I frame it that way. I explain that way because what other explanation is there? I know Republican voters think Biden is funding his own personal IRS army to go after them. So for them, I understand why they would be against this sort of policy. But I know Republican lawmakers don't actually believe that. So the only explanation has to be that they just have this need to help the wealthy tax cheats. Crazy. 
Before you go, don't forget to become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get access to a daily bonus show, an entire bonus show, Monday through Friday exclusively for our members. I know you want it, so go get it. Plus, follow me on threads at Luke Beasley Official, Instagram at Luke Beasley Official, Twitter or X at Luke P. Beasley, and sign up for that free Beasley Brief, a daily morning newsletter summarizing the previous day's events by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash brief, and I'll talk to you next time.